Hello everyone this is part 14 of what if Naruto was sealed because he was too powerful, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, to see more comment down below, now let's start the intro. As if having demonic chakra flooding your coils for hours in the middle of a battle with 2s rank missing ninja. Having a sentient sword with superpowers suck out all of your regular chakra, getting run clean through by a steel cable, and flying on a bumpy bird while your new, servant, that apparently wouldn't take no for an answer valiantly attempted to patch your belly wound wasn't enough excitement torment for one day, Naruto found himself caught in the shakeout from hell by Tayuya upon being spotted at the front door. Now normally he would have either tried reasoning with her and explaining himself after listening to what was bothering her, or he would have Kawarimi with the nearest hapless fool, i.e. Shikamaru Nara, who had just entered the vicinity to see what all of the fuss was about, but today after all of the things that had transpired over the last three to five day period, upon being snatched up and shaken like a rag doll by the girl for approximately 30 seconds he blacked out. Master. Hamako yelled as she showed surprising speed and strength by yanking Naruto away from Tayuya as soon as his eyes rolled back in his head and he started foaming at the mouth, why would you do that to him? Do you have any idea what he did to himself today? He was barely able to stand even with my help. Master. Was the questioning statement that went up unanimously after Hamako spoke, one tone was in curiosity, one tone was in annoyance and anger, and the last was in raw unbridled amusement, accompanied by a short perverted giggle. Hamako looked at the unresponsive Naruto in her arms before sighing and looking towards Tsunami, do you have anywhere I can keep him for the night? I'm afraid with the grievous injuries he had inflicted on his person he will need a few days before he can move safely. Tsunami nodded, yes, we have extra rooms upstairs, it was where we were planning to place everyone else for the night. Hamako gave a short bow before dragging Naruto up the steps, thank you very much. Kakashi gave her an eye smile, he'll be up and about, running amok by tomorrow. Don't worry. Hamako looked over at him while she was dragging Naruto up the stairs and almost dropped him when she saw him, White Fang. She shook her head and continued lugging Naruto up the stairs. Kakashi raised his one visible eyebrow in surprise, what did she call me? How would a girl like that even know that name, let alone had an inkling of how to associate me with it? By the way, where did he even find her, and why would she call him master? And why the hell is he so hurt? Just what have you been doing while you were gone Naruto? Shikamaru had musings of his own as he watched Naruto get dragged up the stairs but decided to save that for later, alright. The troublesome blonde is back, so can we go home soon? Tayuya just stared at them going upstairs, who the hell is this? And master, what the fuck is going on here? Kakashi sighed and put a hand on her shoulder, there's not much you're going to be getting out of Naruto tonight so you might as well wait for him to wake up before asking anything, however if he refuses to answer that's his business. To you all, there are things that I simply have to know about, that wasn't the same sword that he left with either. XXX. The next day. Getting to him however, proved very difficult when Tayuya decided to forego Kakashi's advice to just let the matter sit until the next morning, deciding to wake him up and talk to him right then. As when she reached for the shut door leading to the room that Hamako had taken Naruto into, she found herself unable to make contact without taking a significant jolt before seeing the seal slapped on the front of the door. Tayuya growled to herself and yelled at Kakashi to get, shithead stupid seal, off of the door. However when Kakashi walked upstairs and looked at the seal on the door all he could say was that Naruto was getting really good with his fuinjutsu and walked away without even attempting to touch it. This didn't however stop him from walking away and giggling at the thought of what exactly that girl was doing in the room all alone with Naruto. Inari was absolutely ecstatic at the news of Naruto being in the house and ended up foregoing any warning towards staying away from his room, giving him a nasty little shock when he tried to barge in and see his hero. Needless to say, after that one, no one else tried getting into that room for the rest of the night. Naruto awoke to the feeling of being snuggly placed in a futon, a good sign of everything being cool. He then remembered what had transpired last night. Maybe he should have said that his body was more brittle than a piece of chalk the second he walked in the door, actually no, that wouldn't have stopped what had happened to him. Feeling it hard to move, he sighed, Hamako-chan. 
Yawn asterisk yes Naruto Sama. Why are you in the futon with me? He asked blankly, looking down at the mop of white hair with her arms wrapped around him. Hamako looked up at him, opening one amber eye, you were going into shock due to your injuries and exhaustion again master, and I assumed that without your shirt and with you just in those bandages you were cold. I simply decided to comfort you using my body heat. Naruto nodded, I see. However, is there any particular reason that you're naked? Hamako shrugged, I felt it would be better if there were no articles of clothing to divert my heat master. Thinking that he somehow took offense to this she frowned at him, are you angry with me? I'm sorry if you don't find me attractive enough. Naruto made to sit up as Hamako allowed him up and covered her chest, what? No, hell no, are you kidding me? By the way, what cup size are you for references sake? You can't be anything under a C, never mind. But you don't have to do this stuff for me. You don't owe me anything, I'm taking you with me because I want you with me. I was never going to just leave you there by yourself, you deserve better after everything that has happened, and seeing as how you're all that's left of my ancestral village and you seem to have a connection with my family I decided on bringing you to Kanoa. Hamako smiled at him as she stood still covering herself, and that is why I am willing to do these things for you so easily Naruto-sama. I feel that at some point I must tell you about myself in order for you to understand why I feel this way on the subject. Naruto shook his head at the sound of someone coming towards the door as he smiled at Hamako, I think that's something that needs to happen at some point. I'd be glad to listen to you when you decide to do so. Naruto, whenever you feel like taking your seal off of the door, breakfast is ready for you and your friend, giggles. Naruto turned his head from the door where he saw the seal Kakashi was talking about, you put a seal on the door. Hamako shrugged in response, I didn't want anyone trying to disturb you last night so I put it up. Well I guess that's our cue to head on down and grab some chow Hamako-chan. He then raised an eyebrow as he noticed that she was still covering her modesty with not the least bit of embarrassment or anxiety, we need to get you some damn clothes to wear. He then had another thought, why are you not the least bit concerned with the fact that you're sitting in front of me naked? Hamako looked at him in a cute clueless manner, well I assumed that upon awakening you would feel tempted to take advantage of me in this state, so considering what I had initially anticipated to happen I'm not really bothered in the least if you just look. Naruto gave her a deadpan look, so you fully expected me to see you all snuggled up on my chest, both of us in a less than fully clothed state to say the least, and decide to more or less ravage you. He got a nod in response, do I really give off that kind of vibe? Hamako smiled, not at all master, but you are a teenager that is growing up, and you are my age. It would only be natural of you to see a reason to take advantage of that. Oh yeah, this girl is going to be a lot of fun I can just sense it boy. Good luck with that. Quipped the QB amusedly from within Naruto's head. Naruto kept up his look, and you seem to be just are okay with that. I would ask you why, but I'm kind of afraid to know the answer. Naruto groaned as he stood up, not exactly throbbing in pain like he had been not an entire 24 hours prior, but still very stiff, okay, change into what I gave you to wear and I'll see if I can't get you any clothes of your own today. Naruto rolled his eyes as Hamako immediately stood up, shedding her only shield to her modesty to acquiesce to his request with not a second thought. Yeah Kit I can see it already. Kyuubi spoke up as Hamako moved to change, that little girl is going to have you wrapped around her finger without even knowing she has it, mark my words. Naruto felt like disputing, but just could not find it in himself to do so as he found himself staring at Hamako squeeze one of his muscle shirts over her chest, you know, the part of me that enjoys the fact that I'm watching this right now has to agree with you. Kami, Ero Kyofu and Kakashi sensei messed me up good didn't they? Naruto smirked as he watched Hamako attempt to smooth out the shirt, making her assets move in a very noticeable manner, and I simply just don't care. XXX. After amusing himself by watching Hamako get dressed, Naruto decided to forego a shirt and simply walk downstairs in just his bandages and a dark red pair of pants. Hamako had re-bandaged him despite his insistence that he was fine, and the end result ended up with his upper body up to his neck and even his arms looking like he had escaped an attempt at living mummification. Naruto sat at the table and gave everyone a big, healthy grin as they watched Hamako grab a seat next to him, hey there everybody. I can see you all have something to say, so go ahead and say it. 
Inari quickly jumped in before anyone could speak or question what he had been doing for the better part of a week. It's good to see you again, Naruto. How have you been? Naruto smiled at the ecstatic young boy. Well, I'm glad someone here wants to know how I've been doing just because they missed me. Inari grinned at the praise from the scar faced blonde as everyone else currently in possession of a Kanoa headband sweet dropped. Kakashi cleared his throat, well be that as it may Naruto, you said you wouldn't be gone any longer than two days. Naruto gave him a dry stare, I severely underestimated the lengths that creepy people were willing to go to in order to find me. Kakashi immediately knew what he meant, so how did it go? Naruto gestured to himself, I'm still in one piece so that's always good. And I will say that the trip was extremely productive. Kakashi I smiled to him, I noticed. Now who is this mysterious girl you came here with? Naruto looked over at Hamako who bowed to Kakashi, I'm sorry Hitaki-san. My name is Hamako Kiyomizu, I was unaware that Naruto-sama knew Kanoa's white fang. It certainly is a pleasure to meet you. Kakashi laughed uncomfortably, sorry, you've got the wrong guy. I'm his son actually, Kakashi Hitaki at your service. Hamako blushed at the mistake, I'm so sorry, but you look so much like him even with your face covered the way it is. I couldn't believe that I was in the presence of such a legendary ninja for a moment. Shikamaru raised an eyebrow, did you just call Naruto, Sama? Hamako looked over at the pineapple-haired boy, that's right. I did. How else am I supposed to show respect for master? Naruto face faltered out of his chair. How did he not remember to tell Hamako to keep all of that Sama stuff and master talk under wraps for the time being? Oh, that's right he was dealing with chakra exhaustion and wounds brought about from battle. Master. Tayuya let out, shithead what did you do to get this girl to call you master? Actually, why the hell do you even have a girl following you anyway? You sure didn't leave Kiri with her. Naruto pulled himself off of the floor and returned to his seat next to Hamako, it is a long story filled with lots and lots of personal things that are inconsequential to all of you with the exception of Kakashi, and that's because he was the one to let me go in the first place, therefore he's the only one getting the scoop on that. I'll tell you later Kakashi-sensei. Kakashi nodded in acceptance, there were just some things that most people didn't need to know, he understood that much. Shikamaru groaned, so you disappear at the random for a week, show back up in Nami no Kuni for Kami knows what reason, you come back all bandaged like it's normal, and you're not even going to tell us why. Yep. Naruto said without a trace of guilt or shame in the matter, it's not like you guys lost a pound of flesh following me or something. The only one I owe an explanation to is Kakashi, because he was the one that put himself on the firing line and let me go. If I hadn't come back do you realize how screwed he would be? That walk back to Kanoa would be like him heading to the gallows. Kakashi flinched and nodded, he might as well have gone missing Nin if he didn't come back with Naruto, especially after explaining to Sunid and Jiraiya when he disappeared and how, suicidal to say the very least. Why? Shikamaru asked. It was strange that Kakashi would flinch like that at the thought of him losing Naruto. Naruto was strong, very strong, but he was just a chunin. Kakashi was a junin of perhaps the highest feasible caliber with the most vaunted dujutsu keke genkai in Kanoa's history. For Naruto to say something like that and for Kakashi to actually make a motion that supported his words was something that registered looking into, but he wasn't going to be getting anything from Naruto since the boy wasn't very vocal on a lot of the things he was doing professionally these days. Hell, these days no one other than the Hokage herself even knew how to find him other than leaving him messages at home for the longest time until it was discovered that he trained by tearing the forest of death asunder. Naruto leveled his gaze coolly at Shikamaru, you really don't want to know that right now Shikamaru, I can guarantee that you would find it troublesome to say the very least. Tayuya scoffed, well fine then Mr. Secret. At least tell us where you got her. She said, pointing at Hamako, why did you bring her here? Does she live around here or something? Naruto looked at Hamako who nodded, well, no. I found here while I was off doing what it was that Kakashi let me leave to go do. He gave a meaningful look to Kakashi, I found her, she was the only one left Kakashi sensei and if not for my certain bad luck with a few red clouds I wouldn't have even found her, or anything, so that's a good thing at least. He locked his eyes with Tayuya, and she's coming back to Kanoa. With me, he said in a low growl, as if daring anyone to even attempt to call him on it. Kakashi nodded, of course Naruto, but how are you going to support yourself and her on a chunin's regular salary for missions? 
Naruto smirked, you wouldn't happen to have a copy of the bingo book on you would you? Kakashi nodded and passed it to Naruto who had his eyes widened to a comical margin when he found what he was looking for, yeah, I'm absolutely sure that I can support myself and Hamako-chan on my current wages. Don't worry about that. Why? Kakashi asked. He knew that Naruto was well aware of what it took to feed himself and keep himself comfortable, now he had to multiply that by at least two now. Naruto passed the book back to Kakashi, you'll find out that later too. He looked at his commander, so when do you think we'll be heading back to Kanoa, since I'm positive that I pretty much missed the entire mission in Kiri. Kakashi placed the book back into one of his vest pockets, well since you're back to full, or as full as you need to be, health we can head back today if you want. Naruto nodded, that sounds alright. I need to go get Hamako-chan some clothes first, because she cannot keep wearing my clothes up and down the road. No matter how good she makes them look. He added mentally. Tayuya stared at Naruto and spoke far too calmly for his tastes, and why on earth would she be needing to wear your clothes in the first place? Before Naruto could think of a brilliant and believable way out of this situation, Hamako chose to answer, because when Master found me I had no clothing of my own. Naruto's eyes bulged in horror as he saw the calm expression on Tayuya's face as an ill omen. It didn't help that he could see tick marks starting to form. Looking at Shikamaru he was trying to avert his gaze from Hamako, who was still wearing Naruto's much too tight shirt. Kakashi simply gave Naruto a thumbs up complete with an eye smile, you work fast Naruto. Naruto simply turned and looked at Hamako before grabbing her and disappearing in a shunshun behind Inari, snatching him up also, well it looks like Inari needs to help me find somewhere to get stuff for Hamako-chan. Later you guys. He then vanished in another shunshun, leaving all of the others sitting there in silence. Tazuna, who had stumbled downstairs sometime during Naruto's explanation looked at everyone else in confusion, why is everyone just sitting there? Kakashi shrugged and pulled out his Ika Ika, he's already going to tell me everything I want to know later. I'm good as far as that's concerned. He felt the glare of tsunami on him and sighed, Anari's not here right now, can I at least read it until Naruto brings him back? Shikamaru stood up and walked off, chasing him now would be too much work to deal with. I'll worry about things later. He headed out the front door, I'll be on the roof getting some sleep. All eyes panned over to Tayuya who still had her uncharacteristically calm face on, getting even Kakashi to look at her in concern. She simply stood up and walked upstairs, there's no reason for me to try chasing him now just to yell at him when I live right next door to him in the first place. I've already waited a week, I'm sure I can wait another day or two to tear him apart. And the more time that passes until then, the more ammunition he's building up for me. XXX. Two days later, Konohagakur no Sato. The group had set out from Nami no Kuni and moved at an incredibly brisk pace even by shinobi standards to reach Kanoa, mostly because they were being headed by a junin in Kakashi and the everlasting stamina lunatic that answered to the name of Naruto. Naruto carried Hamako the entire way due to the fact that she wasn't nearly as fast as the rest of them were, with her not being a ninja and all, and was still cutting a pace that kept him in step with Kakashi. Speaking of Hamako, Naruto had enlisted the services of Inari to find a suitable clothing store for his new female attachment. She still had her hair up in her twin pigtails that went down her back past her shoulders with the bangs that shaded part of her eyes from clear view, but she now wore tight black shorts that came to her thigh, a white, long-sleeved kimono top that stopped at her waistline, the belt of which was white as well, and a white pair of high-heeled sandals. The kimono top had light blue ornate designs of waves all over it. Naruto had instructed her to pick out whatever she liked, as he assured her that he would have absolutely no problem footing the bill, he then rubbed his hands together and chuckled conspiratorially, making Inari back away slightly. Hamako had mostly spoken only to Naruto throughout the entire trip, with him trying to get her used to what to expect upon arrival in Kanoa, and asking her about what he could do to make her comfortable once she started living with him, since letting a girl that had never lived alone live in a foreign village at least 20 years after her time by herself was an absolutely horrible idea. That and Hamako insisted on staying close to him anyway. Upon reaching the village they all headed straight to the Hockage Tower to debrief. They all stood at attention while Kakashi gave the, official, mission parameters, and upon being excused by Sunid the two other chunin walked out of the office while Naruto left in a shunshun.
After a few moments to make sure that Shikamaru and Tayuya had left the building, Sunit slid the window open where she found quite an amusing sight, Naruto and Jirai standing on the same ledge under the window glaring at each other. Both were crouched with Jirai still towering over him, what do you think you're doing Gaki at my entrance? Naruto glared up at him, about to head back inside of Sunit Barkan's office the fun way. What does it matter to you Ero Senen? Jirai humped and turned his nose up, Sunit Haim would only let me enter her office this way. Why would she let a brat like you do it? He looked back at Naruto to see he was no longer standing there, where did he go? She lets me do it because she loves me. That and the fact that I hit Gamabunta up on a regular basis to get sake for her. Naruto said, standing in front of Sunid as they both looked down at Jiraiya from inside the office. Sunid ruffled Naruto's hair, such a good little chunin aren't you? Yes Sunid sama Naruto chirped happily, you still got the shipment when I was gone didn't you? Sunid nodded, and Shizu Nichin didn't take it from you. Another nod, excellent. Jiraiya stared with his mouth agape while Sunid and Naruto both had looks of amusement on their faces, and since you have such a problem with the brat using what you like to call, your entrance, you can take the long way around. She said happily before slamming the window shut as he leapt for it in an attempt to enter the way he had gotten accustomed to doing. Jiraiya poured at the window like a puppy before frowning and jumping off the ledge. Roughly one minute later he entered the office through the door, glaring at Naruto and Sunid who were both grinning next to one another. He took his usual spot, leaning on the wall by Sunit's desk as he noticed the extra person in the room, sitting patiently with a small, pleasant smile on her face, hey, who's the girl? Sunit looked to Naruto, as did Kakashi as Naruto hadn't really told him anything yet, asking to wait until they all got home so that he didn't have to repeat himself. Naruto motioned for her to come over to him, which she did and he showed her off to everyone in the room, this is Hamako Kiyomizu, and seal the room off and get your anbu out of here before I go any further. Sunid looked at Hamako curiously, is this that big of a deal? Naruto shrugged, it could be, it's all a matter of your personal opinion, but do you really want to risk it? Sunid frowned, but nodded and made a motion as the aura of the room changed, signifying that her guards had left. Naruto felt comfortable with continuing at this point, I found her in Azushiogaku. Jiraiya gave him an odd look, why did you go there? How did you even know about that place? How did you even get there? Naruto gave Jiraiya a straightforward look, I know a lot of things I shouldn't. You should know this by now Ero Kyofu. By the way, speaking of knowing things, I think Kakashi Sensei should know everything at this point, but that's neither here nor there. Kakashi sensei let me go once we got to Kiri seeing as how it was just a reconnaissance mission and I had asked to go to a zoo to see if there was anything there for me. And there was, there was a lot of stuff there actually. Naruto pulled a scroll from his pocket and placed it on the table, I found quite a few things there. Mostly things about Fuinjutsu that I hope to put into practice soon, as well as the sword strap to my back. It's a good thing I found it too, since my other one was broken during my fight with Akatsuki. Jiraiya's eyes widened, you fought Akatsuki. Was it Itachi and kiss him again? Naruto shook his head no, thank Kami then, because I was about to ask you how the hell you survived that on your own if that were the case. Naruto sighed, feeling some phantom pains thinking of the entire situation again, it wasn't them, but damn if it wasn't still a violent fight. Naruto wanted to give Sai some credit since he was the one that chased off Deodara, but he couldn't really do so without blowing both of their cover, I ended up getting beaten the first time they found me after a day of dealing with the traps and other obstacles left all over the place. I was forced into a whirlpool that thankfully led to a series of underground passages where I found her. He ended pointing to Hamako, she was frozen in some kind of sealed off room in the vault I found. How long was she frozen? Kakashi asked as he was interested in the story at hand, she doesn't look any older than you Naruto. Naruto nodded, I know, she was frozen when she was 14. That was during the fall of Azushiogaku, she's the only one left. It's been at least 20 years since she was placed there. Apparently she's a level 9 seal master, better than you Ero Kyofu. Actually, Hamako cut in, I was ranked level 9, but I was never able to take my promotional tests or I don't know what level I'm really at now. Jiraiya looked at Hamako in disbelief, you're seriously saying that this little girl is better than me at Fuinjutsu. You need to come up with better stories for your girlfriend Gaki. 
Naruto rolled his eyes, first of all, she's not my girlfriend you ass. Second of all, she is that good. She made a seal that animated a statue and made it a chakra blocking killing machine that almost took me out twice. In addition to that she basically ran down my seal making skills to the letter, pointed out every flaw in one of my best creations, and did other things that Ero Kyofu could have never come up with on the spot. She doesn't even need any guide points, she can just scratch something up just like that, she's faster than he is as making them too. Hamako blushed when all eyes turned to her, you don't have to put me over like that Naruto-sama, she then straightened up and regained her composure, but master is right. I did say that I would work with him on his fuinjutsu. I cannot allow a known Uzumaki to exist that is any less than my equal at the art. Kakashi interjected, so enlighten me Naruto, because I seem to have missed the reason that she calls you Sama and Master with no trouble whatsoever. Hamako shrugged, because Naruto-sama is my master. She said as if that answered his question. Tsunade sighed, brat, there had better be a damn good reason that you've got this girl calling you master as if she were obligated to do so. Naruto backed up a few steps as he saw her hand twitch as if it were going to creep towards the bane of Naruto's office existence, the paperweight, I tried to get her to stop ever since she first started doing it, I tried telling her that she didn't need to call me that stuff, but she insists on it, and all she ever says is that how else is she to show her respect to me. I just got tired of trying to get her to stop and decided to flow with it. Hamako frowned, Naruto-sama is the only Uzumaki left alive apparently. I pledged my life to the service of the Uzumaki clan after they rescued me and gave me a purpose, therefore he is my master and I will do whatever he commands of me. Jiraiya's eyes widened and he slowly pulled out a pad and pen, go on, he clicked his pen open. Hamako was oblivious to Jiraiya's current actions, therefore she did as asked, I am there for whatever master requires of me. Anything that he desires that is in my power to provide for him he should consider done. I am his to command for his every whim. While she spoke, Jiraiya was scribbling rapidly in his pad. Jiraiya was perusing over his notes with a lecherous grin on his face, well I see absolutely no problems with this setup as long as the Gaki knows what he's doing. A roll of the eyes from his apprentice was the reaction received, you wouldn't would you? I'm not going to make Hamako-chan do anything she doesn't want to do, but she will be living with me. I think I can get her assimilated quicker to the way things are if she was with me. Tsunid agreed with him, very well. I'll have her entered as a citizen of Kanoa when I get the chance. Does she wish to be a ninja? Naruto shook his head, Hamako-chan isn't a ninja, she's just damnably good at fuinjutsu. Hamako nodded in agreement, Naruto-sama is correct. I was instructed from the earliest time I was able in fuinjutsu. I was unable to become a shinobi of Azushiogaku, but I still found ways to be useful, I hope for the same here as well. Tsunade gave the girl a smile before turning her attention to the scroll Naruto dropped on her desk, so I assume that this is full of the other things that you found on your excursion. Naruto smirked, not really, I still have those things with me since no one but an Uzumaki can even open or read them. This is something else though. You might really like what it is, it might make one of our treaties even stronger after all of the tumultuous stuff that it went through over the last year. Tsunade opened the scroll only to widen her eyes as a pile of broken pieces of, something fell out. She saw a head and turned it towards her before hearing Jiraiya gasp. He had a discarded piece with the emblem of a scorpion on it, this is the insignia of Akasuna no Sasori. Kid are you telling me you were able to capture one of his puppets? Naruto shook his head, no, this is Sasori himself, or what's left of Sasori. He turned his body into a puppet. I think I destroyed his heart or something when I finished him off because that was the only time he bled during the entire fight and man did he bleed when I hit it. His eyes turned to Sunid with a shine, so when can I expect my money for the kill? Sunid smiled at Naruto, I'll dispatch a hawk to Suna when we're done here telling them that you've defeated Sasori. Good going brat, how did you pull it off? Kakashi walked up to Naruto and planted a hand on his shoulder, yeah I'm actually very interested in that too. Naruto shrugged, well most of the things he had were intended to poison me. I'm immune to pretty much everything ever conceived in that department so he couldn't finish me. He only had one thing with the potential to really finish me off and when I disabled that it turned into a battle of attrition, and I never lose when it factors down to that. He adjusted the sword on his back, another member of Akitsuki is some guy named Deodara. 
I wasn't able to finish him, he got away, but at least you know another one of them now, so you have four confirmed members and one of them is dead. Jiraiya planted a hand on Naruto's shoulder, that's some good work Naruto. You're really coming along these days aren't you? Naruto grinned up at the man, yep, and after what Kakashi told me I know what I'm doing next. Kakashi blinked, what would that be Naruto? Naruto channeled some wind chakra into his hand, I'm going to learn how to mix elemental chakra with the Rasengan and see what I can do from there, and the best part is, he lifted his other hand as lightning began to crackle around it, I have two to work with now. Kakashi's eyes widened, how did you get another affinity Naruto? Naruto let the chakra around his hands drop, I use a lot of lightning ninjutsu to go along with my wind. You would think that I would suck at lightning stuff because it's weak against my main affinity, but I use it so much I developed a second affinity. That's always fun isn't it? Now I have to do the exercises for this too, I hope nothing as serious splitting a waterfall is necessary for it. Naruto-sama may not be very good at fuinjutsu but he is very strong. Hamako mumbled with a smile on her face, I have a question that I hope I am permitted to ask you master. Naruto gave the white-haired girl a smile, sure thing Hamako-chan, you can ask me anything that you want. Hamako nodded and walked over to Naruto, placing her hands on his belly and pulling up his shirt, I was under the impression that you weren't very adept at sealing, so why is there such a powerful one on you? How did you come up with it, and why is it there? It looks like it was meant to hold something back, does it hold back a bulk of your chakra or something? She said as she forced Naruto's seal to appear by channeling her own chakra around it. All of the adults in the room had their faces darken at the thought of Hamako finding out about the QB, but Naruto just kept smiling, tell me. If you found out what was inside me wasn't exactly normal would you think any lesser of me Hamako-chan? Hamako looked up at him inquisitively, no I can't say that I would master. I know full well what Fuinjutsu is capable of holding back in the power of seals, if there is something this strong on you there is no way that what it holds back is, normal, by any stretch of the imagination. Naruto nodded and looked at Jiraiya, I told you she was good. He looked back down at Hamako who was poking at his stomach and staring intently at the seal, when did you find out about it, because you seem like you wanted to ask about it for a while. Hamako looked up at him and stood back up, I saw it when I was bandaging you up on the way to your meeting place with Kakashi-san. There was some kind of red glow coming from it, but you were slipping in and out of consciousness so I couldn't ask you about it. Naruto kept smiling to her, so Hamako-chan I just have to say, what do you know about the word, Jinchuriki? Hamako blinked, you mean like Mito-sama. Naruto sighed, again with that name. Mito-sama, and you say that I'm related to her or something, and what does she have to do with being a Jinchuriki? You don't know this either. Do you know anything about your clan master? Naruto shook his head, nope, no one ever told me anything about them, I just figured it was a simple family name or something that I was stuck with in the orphanage at first, I didn't even know I had a clan. Mito was my grandmother. Tsunade said while looking at Naruto, she was the wife of the Shodaim Hokage. Hamako looked around the room and realized that Jiraiya and Sunid were there, you sure do know some powerful people master. Tell me about it, he said, but what about Mito? How does she fit in with the term Jinchuriki? Hamako lifted Naruto's shirt once more to look at his seal, that's easy. She was one. The container of the QB no Yoko. Naruto palmed his face, so I not only am related to the Yondime Hokage, had a clan of my own that more or less ran an entire hidden village, and am the Kyubi Jinchuriki, I'm related to the first Kyubi Jinchuriki who just so happened to be the Shodime's wife. And I'm sure at least one of you knew it too, man, Danzo Gigi has no idea how right his idea was to make me go after Hokage, this pedigree of mine is ridiculous. Naruto then looked at Sunid and pointed at her, wait, so that technically does make you my actual bar chan on some level doesn't it? So I can really call you Sunid Barkin now and you can't say jack about it. Sunid looked at Naruto with a tick mark on her head, you're so lucky we're supposed to be family brat. Love you too Sunid Barkin. Naruto ducked a paperweight, ha. Huh. You've got to do something better than that. Naruto got drilled in the side of the head with one of Sunid's heels, gar. Who throws a shoe? Honestly. He rubbed his head and looked back at Hamako, well I ask you all of this because I'm the QB Jinchuriki now. His eyes met hers as she looked at him in shock, I know it's a lot to take in, but if you have any problems with it you don't have to live with me. 
Naruto then blinked in surprise, um, Hamako-chan. Hamako's eyes shined as she prodded and poked at the seal on Naruto's belly, you're a walking example of the most powerful fuwinjutsu known to man. That is so amazing master. Jiraiya looked at the girl in amazement, so you're not concerned by this in any way. Hamako didn't even look up, of course not. Master is just master, he just has a demon sealed inside of him, and pretty well too if this is any indicator. It makes sense though, that power that you were supposed to be using when you fought those ninja that attacked us felt malevolent. Naruto smiled at how easily his new guest was taking his secret. He looked up at everyone else, anyway I've been thinking. Maybe you should just come out with it and tell everyone about the QB. Tsunade gave him a strange look, why on earth would you want that? Naruto smirked and let out a small laugh as Hamako kept poking at him, because it's getting obnoxious to keep a secret, and it's a bad secret at that. Everybody knows except for the kids, and if there's one thing I hate it's badly kept secrets. You might as well just let people talk about it at this point. Jiraiya looked at Naruto somewhat proudly, he was taking his burden head on and just pressing the issue on it instead of trying to sweep it away. It was common knowledge that for those that didn't know Naruto but knew of him that the QB would always be the proverbial elephant in the room, what about the haters kid? Naruto scoffed, if anyone has any problems with it I can keep myself safe at this point. If any of the people my age have a problem with it they obviously don't care or know me enough to tell the difference between me and a demon, and anyone that has enough of a problem to actually try something should have done it when I could barely fight back, I just killed an S-rank missing ninja by myself, let that little bit of info fly when you tell the village and see if anyone is still stupid enough to try anything on me. They couldn't get into my house anyway after Hamako-chan helps me set up the security seals. Kakashi looked over the blonde who had a confident look on his face and a white-haired girl still messing around with his abdomen, well it's your secret to tell I guess. It would make at least one less secret the village has to keep anyway. Naruto nodded in agreement, yeah, and when Akatsuki tries something on me the village will at least know why I'm tearing it apart fighting in the middle of it instead of just being confused about it. Tsunade smirked, well that's all I need from you right now then Naruto. Take your friend here and get her settled in, I'll get you later if I need either of you for anything. Naruto nodded, come on Hamako-chan. He said, pulling her up from poking at his stomach, you can gawk at the seal later, it's time to show you around before I show you where I live. Hamako blushed at being caught at so unabashedly perusing Naruto's seal, in public. Naruto picked her up piggyback, ignoring her, eep, in surprise and walked over to the window, tossing a salute over his shoulder before opening it and jumping out of it. XXX. After a few hours of showing Hamako around he finally decided to take her home so that he could figure out how all of this was going to work until he got his money for Sasori's bounty. Naruto opened the door to his apartment, thankful that he hadn't gotten into the habit of trashing the place as he never really spent too much time there anyway as he clicked the light on. Hamako walked in behind him, master why is it that there were so many people looking at us strangely? Naruto shrugged as he made his way around his apartment, oh, well most people don't really like Jinchuriki much at all and a lot of people think I'm the demon reincarnated or something stupid like that. Hamako sat down on Naruto's couch, well that's dumb. No one ever thought of Mito-sama like that. Naruto made a noise of affirmation as he walked back towards his room and started picking stuff up, well she was the wife of the hockage. If I were him I wouldn't have tolerated any crap like that and would have lopped off a few heads if they tried anything against my wife. He sighed and made his way back towards the main room. Well I only have the one bed Hamako-chan, you can have that until I get paid for the mission and my bounty and can go get something for you too. I'm thinking of moving out too, and since I have you too that might be the best course of action in this case. Knock knock. Sigh asterisk come in Tayuya-chan. Naruto said as he headed into his kitchen to see if he had any food that was still good to eat for him and Hamako. Tayuya walked inside and saw Hamako sitting in one of the couches before turning her head at the sound of Naruto digging through his cabinets. She simply leaned against the door and waited a few moments before speaking, so where did you go? Naruto didn't turn around, Azushiogaku. Ever heard of it? Tayuya kept looking at him, no I haven't. Why did you go? Family stuff as in actually wanting to find out something about them. Naruto went through his refrigerator, 
cursing to himself about having nothing for Hamako, Hamako-chan you don't seem to be much of a fan of ramen so I guess that the rest of my money will have to be on, real food, until I get paid. What do you like? Hamako sat and thought about it while Tayuya was in disbelief over how easily he was telling her these things, why are you telling me this now when you didn't say anything when you left? Naruto grunted as he grabbed a carton of milk from the fridge and shut it, because you didn't need to know. You actually still don't need to know, I'm just telling you this because Hamako-chan is going to live with me and you at least need to know where she came from. She's going to live with you. Tayuya asked incredulously, why? Naruto walked back into the main room and sat down next to Hamako on the couch, because she's from 20 years in the past and she has no idea how this world will operate. Not only that, but she insists on serving my clan and I'm not going to sit here and tell her she can't do the only thing she's ever wanted to do. I can't get her off of that kick so I'm going to help her with it any way I can. Maybe I can help her find something else she wants to do. She looked at Hamako who looked back at her with amber eyes, she's from 20 years in the past. Hamako nodded, I was frozen and preserved. Sealing is a very powerful art. Tayuya sighed, all right I'll try and get used to it. She then sharpened her eyes at Naruto, but you'd better not do anything perverted with her and take advantage of her. Naruto smirked and pulled Hamako into a hug, why Tayuya-chan? Would you like me all to yourself? Tayuya sputtered indignantly, I'll give Hamako-chan whatever she wants, and if what she wants just so happens to be me, who am I to turn her down? If you want me instead all you have to do is ask, I can make cage bunch and you know. There's certainly more than enough of me to go around. Tayuya blushed at the thought before Naruto reappeared at her side and whispered into her ear, I warm up at making 100 you know. And that was all it took for Tayuya to black out with a nosebleed. Naruto caught Tayuya bridal style and looked up at Hamako, well that was certainly easy enough wasn't it? And I didn't even get beat up or bitched out or anything. I'm going to put her in her apartment and then we're going to get some food Hamako-chan because what I've got in here will just piss you off. Five months later, undisclosed location in general area between Chuchi no Kuni, aka Land of Earth and Yama no Kuni, aka Land of Mountains. Naruto had his eyes closed with his sword in his lap inside of a small fissure on the side of a cliff as he caught a wink of sleep before the tough part of his current mission kicked up once more. As he heard the muffled, footsteps of his comrade enter the vicinity he let out a small sigh and started rebooting his mind to prepare for work. His hair had grown out quite a bit during his long time away from home, allowing it to trail down his neck and he was now wearing the gear he had purchased in Kumo. The sleeveless dark grey hooded vest, the black pants, the black braces on his forearms, and his black shinobi sandals. He had grown about three inches over the past few months out and about. As a man in a cat patterned mask entered the cave he looked Naruto over, you're already awake. That's good. It's time to get to work kid. Naruto chuckled, no time for real rest, ha Tenzo. Tenzo sighed and pulled the mask off of his face to reveal a man with short brown hair, black eyes, and a mask style Hate 8 in the fashion of the Nadaim Hokage, use the code name for the love of Kami Naruto. Naruto put his hands up defensively, we're in a cave, 1200 feet off of the ground, 450 more feet to the peak of the mountain. Anyone that actually hears your name is going to be dead in a few minutes anyway and if a patrol actually came all the way out here away from the base they are either completely stupid, or the others didn't do as good as they thought covering their tracks when they went and did reconnaissance, so either way, you're good. Tenzo stared at Naruto for a moment with his eye twitching, lack of respect for protocol aside, you've done very well on this assignment. You're not half bad at this stuff. Who knew a 14-year-old kid was this good at sacking bases? I thought Hokage Sama was insane when she stuck you with my squad but you were damn efficient at this. Naruto shrugged, just because I have a ton of chakra doesn't mean I can't operate without it. I like this kind of stuff. Though that base in Umi no Kuni was a pain in the ass with that scientist and all. Good thing you were there when it started falling apart. That sea monster thing was annoying. Tenzo laughed and rubbed the back of his head, it was pure water. I could control it and bend it to my will, not really a good move on that Amaki guy's part. Anko really didn't take too kindly to the way he played with that girl's head there either. I almost felt sorry for the bastard, almost. Naruto slung his sword over his back, and that's why we sent her and that Isaribi girl back to Kanoa afterwards. 
because we couldn't let her keep doing this crap if that was how she was going to react when we actually caught somebody that was willing to go down without fighting to the death. All right, who's going with me on this one? Is Yugao heading in with me? Tenzo patted the boy on the shoulder, you're going in alone on this one. If you get caught they're going to swarm and head outside. Only the best will stay inside at that point and from there if it requires it you can cut loose with the QB's chakra. I mean really cut loose, like go as hard with it as you can, that's why I'm here remember. Naruto nodded, yeah, about that. Why do you insisting that I keep going full blast with QB's chakra? I mean, it is really good practice without freaking anybody at home out, but won't people be able to tell that Kanoa did this when they feel my chakra being left over afterwards, or can your Mokuten handle that too? As long as you don't turn the place into a smoldering two mile in circumference crater we should be good. Tenzo admitted, although we were supposed to do that anyway, but not with demonic chakra, or alerting anyone that needs to stay alive to our presence. Both of which you using every bit of demonic chakra you can pump out would cause. Naruto stood and dusted himself off before doing some light stretching, so how am I doing this? Am I going in loud or am I doing this on the sly? Because the last loud one ended up almost being a clusterfuck. Quietly. Tenzo said, you pretty much have the general layout of all of Orokimaru's bases mapped out in your head, so anyone else going in wouldn't have the advantage of staying under the radar like you. Naruto took off his Hatei 8 and placed it in a pocket before pulling his hair into a ponytail and pulling his hood over his head, if you've seen one of Orokimaru's bases you've seen them all. The man has next to no imagination for this kind of thing. I swear they all have the same basic layout. Once you get past the creepiness of them they get kind of monotonous. Tenzo placed his own mask back on, all right are you prepared to go? He got a nod from Naruto, well then get started and stay low profile. No ninjutsu, and as little chakra use as possible. Set the charges underground to coincide with the ones above ground and get your ass out of there. Naruto saluted Tenzo, hi Bunteku. With that, Naruto left the cave and started scaling the cliff face with chakra on his feet as the sun began to set. This was what he had been waiting for so long for. Soon it had finally given him a mission that was right up his alley, and though he was out of practice when he started he fell back into the swing of things quickly. Flashback five months prior. You're kidding right Sunid Barkan. She's kidding right Shizu Nichen. Naruto asked in an unbelieving fashion, you're seriously jerking my chain right about now aren't you? I didn't think you would ever send me out on something like this ever again. You're actually going to send me on a real rank mission. Where I'm actually going to fight. Sunid stared Naruto down, you were recommended for Anbu by Genma Shiranui, and even Kakashi has said that seeing what you can do in the group could be worth looking into. This is the perfect opportunity to see what you've got brat, even if you're not technically one of them at this point in time. Any objections? Naruto thought for a moment before shaking his head, no, not really, but can you do some stuff for me while I'm gone? Sunid thought about it, what do you need? Naruto smiled, first, take care of Hamako for me. She should be just fine, she lined the apartment with seals so she should be secure, but she might get lonely. Just keep her busy, she can make all kinds of stuff for you, just give her some specs on what you want in a seal and she'll pull something together for you. Second, get rid of that law for the QB. If people want to talk about it, go ahead and let them, let people form whatever opinion they want on the matter, I'll just have to change it for them later or kill them for being stupid and trying to hurt me, whatever comes first. Sunid Sweet dropped at the casual tone but gave in and agreed to the second request, sure, now about your mission. You will be finally using that little spiky blonde noggin full of Orokimaru secrets for us. What do you have from memory? Naruto sat down, tapping his chin before Shizun placed a sheet of paper and a pen in front of him, Time has pretty much taken a sledgehammer to the minute details, but other than the unholy garbage I have on the cursed seal I have a few of his lieutenant's names and the coordinates of a few bases spread out all over the place. That man really got around. He said as he wrote out some of what he knew on the paper provided. Sunid waited for him to finish before taking and reading what he had down, this isn't bad at all. It's definitely more information than anyone else had been able to scrounge up on Orokimaru's workings for years before this. It's definitely settled then. You will be accompanying a contingent of Anbu on search and destroy missions against the bases you've just listed for us. Naruto had to grin at that, finally. 
He mumbled out, are you going to promote me now or what? Sunid lowered the paper and frowned at him, maybe. We'll see when you get back. I'll summon you in a few days to get your full briefing for the mission. Tell no one what exactly you're doing. I'm sure you know this. Naruto had a question, what about my money? It's been two weeks and I never got my money for Sasori. Sunid rubbed her temple, since he turned his body into a puppet there was no biological evidence of it being Sasori himself despite his signature poison coating the weapons you sent. Naruto blinked, you need DNA. Why didn't you say so? I kept the tatters of the shirt I used when I fought him, it has his blood from my final attack all over it. I'll send it right to you before I set out on this trip. I want my money, Suna's not shafting me on this one. Sunid sent a look to Shizun who nodded and left the room, probably to prepare correspondence to Kei's no Kuni. She then returned her attention to Naruto, I'll handle it if you get me the DNA. Now get rested and ready for the mission. No training, and get your affairs in order before you leave. This one's going to be a long one. Understood Sunid Sama. Consider the bases raided and sacked. Naruto saluted her and exited through the window. End flashback. Night had fallen as Naruto made his way further in from the edge of the cliff he had just scaled and eventually came upon a seemingly normal looking fracture in the rock wall, pretty normal looking cave entrance. The man can certainly disguise his bases when he wants to. The opening seemed unguarded, but Naruto knew far better than that. This base was still active, that meant that there was a guard or two somewhere within easy sight of the entrance. Naruto simply stood still and decided now was the time to use one of his, natural, advantages, Hey QB, can you help me point out any sentries posted out here? I know they're here, I just don't really know where, and attacking one without having a bead on the other could blow my stealth before I even start the mission. He waited for a moment for a reply before receiving one, there is one currently using Doton, Mogaragako no Jutsu Earth Release, Hidden Mole Jutsu about 10 feet in front of the hole in the wall. There is another just inside the entrance, right out of your or anyone else's line of sight. Naruto looked along the ground for a sign of Jutsu use before acknowledging Kyuubi's assistance, thanks a million. Alright he's close enough to the surface so that he can sense the movements of intruders, that means I can use a move to get to him, but I have to somehow get the other guy first, or else he'll get wise to something strange happening and alert the rest of the base to my presence. Naruto was incredibly grateful for the new moon being on this night as it left him with the perfect lack of visibility for him to pull this maneuver off. Naruto created a cage bunshin and hanged it into a spider before pulling out a spool of ninja wire. Naruto's spider clone took the end of the wire and walked off towards the cave, the underground sentry either not noticing or acknowledging the presence of the spider. As it entered the cave and saw the Oto Shinobi posted to stand watch it moved up the wall closest to him before jumping off onto him and gently walking around the man's shoulder area twice, leaving slack to ensure that the wire would go unnoticed. Luckily there was no need for the spider clone to transform back as it found a recess in the wall that it could fit its body into and hold the ninja wire. Upon getting the wire fully situated and steadied it dispelled. Upon getting the mental cue from his clone, Naruto pulled on his end of the wire as hard as he could, feeling the steel wire tighten and run into something, the guard's throat. Naruto kept pulling until he felt the wire give a tug back, signifying that the body of his target had expired. Dropping the wire from his hands he then picked up a stone before tossing it directly into the mouth of the cave. The underground sentry feeling the vibration, jumped out of hiding and looked inside the cave, unknowingly turning his back on the direct location of Naruto who then proceeded to bury a kunai into the back of his head neck from 30 yards out. Naruto ran from his hiding place and pulled the kunai from the back of the man's head before holstering it and making a cage bunch and to clean up his mess outside while he continued on in with his mission. Getting through Orokimaru's underground designed bases was a simple game of what deadly trap goes here. The first hallway, uninhabited, which meant, avoid the pressure plates that would drop the floor out from beneath you in a flash, dropping you into a pungi pit. An easy solution to this, run along the wall. Avoid the tripwires that were set up down the long staircase leading deeper into base that would end up with poison gas secreting from the walls and saturating the area. The second branching corridor, Naruto proceeded to take a left, hoping that he was right in remembering that the first right turn in the original Oto base that he infiltrated lead directly to the barracks, not exactly the most fun start to a mission if he could accurately recall. 
Before leaving however, he stuck a charge on the ceiling of the exact spot where the three paths met, using the low light of the base to hide it. Orokimaru really needed to invest in some lighting in his bases. The torches gave the place a dark, creepy, somewhat intimidating vibe, but low visibility meant guys like him could sneak in all day and have the advantage, especially over Oto Shinobi and their light grey usual uniforms. Eventually Naruto came upon a room with all kinds of communications equipment. Oh yeah, this room definitely had to go if he was going to keep doing this. As he entered the room he had to ponder something as he moved along the wall. Why did every room with equipment like this have everything facing away from the only door in there? Even one desk or table turned around would mean that his way in would have been much harder. One guy manning the main radio out of the base with his back turned. There was no real need to flat out kill him, or even touch him. All he was getting was static anyway, so simply killing the main feed wouldn't alert him whatsoever, and then he could have the guy scrambling to get someone on the line when the place started coming down around him. Naruto followed the cable of the radio up to somewhere in the ceiling corner, with a placement like that, it probably would have led to a long-range dish of some sort outside of the base. It was quickly severed with a shuriken cutting straight through it, leaving the same sound of static on the line. His job done, Naruto exited the room and continued down the hall. XXX. Outside the base. Waiting along the jagged peaks, overlooking the area that Naruto had just entered a pair of masked Kanoa Anbu watched for any sign of trouble for the blonde inside. An Anbu with long purple hair turned to her brown-haired partner, Bunteko, how long do you think it will take him to finish up and return outside? I don't know Yugao. Tenzo stated, it depends on how many Oto Shinobi he comes across in there. Sending him to do it himself was a better option than sending in two and having them split up or something along those lines, especially after what happened during the first base we ended up going after. You're breaking protocol Taiko. Naruto must be rubbing off on you on that front. Yugao teased, but you're right I guess. That alert inside of the first base we went after wasn't a laughing matter at all. I'm honestly still kind of scared from when Naruto had to access the QB's chakra to cut our way out. I can see why he was worried about using it around us, the bloodlust I felt was horrible. You were the one that insisted on checking out the barracks. Tenzo insisted before nodding, well either way he should be fine. Even if he gets caught he can get himself out. I think I want this kid in Anbu when we go home, he's damn good all things considered. Think he's okay in there? She asked. Tenzo chuckled, if he wasn't then I guarantee that we would both know it. XXX with Naruto inside the base. Naruto had only had to kill one more person since he had been there. A lone ninja that had almost caught sight of Naruto walking through the halls as he was on his way back to the barracks had to be dealt with. Naruto ended up breaking the neck of the unprepared man with a swift kick to the head before a fight could break out. Why he didn't just shout intruder, Naruto will never know, but that was neither here nor there. To hide the body, Naruto propped the corpse up in an off-area corner to make it look like he was trying to catch some standing zeds before someone busted him. That wasn't going to be a reasonable hiding spot for long so he had to move. There was only one real area left for Naruto to enter and go through before he could exit. The laboratory. Orokimaru constantly had people working on experiments for him and sending him the results. It was the main reason he created Otogakur in the first place, a series of hideouts and strongholds where Orokimaru could experiment on subjects and learn ninjutsu. Every base they had been to thus far had a laboratory with tons of experiments, some reasonable, most of the inhumane variety, as well as a bunch of prisoners, many of which the Kanoa ninja had discovered would have been better off dead. Naruto's interest in Orokimaru's labs were the product of the promise he had made to Anko to get the seal off of her neck. He had discovered from Orokimaru's notes back when he was a child that the origin of the cursed seal were from an organic source, most notably a human being. Orokimaru was obviously keeping him somewhere and he figured if he was able to take out enough bases he would be able to find the person it came from. If he could do that then he could get Hamako to work on trying to break the seal down. He still needed DNA from Orokimaru to study, but he was sure that there was plenty of that laying around Kanoa somewhere. The only ways to really free Anko that he could possibly see were to either kill Orokimaru, something he knew he wasn't going to get a chance to do anytime soon, or to find the source of the cursed seal and go from there. 
Orokimaru's true lack of knowledge in Fuwinjutsu came to the forefront once again as instead of some sort of elaborate security device the door to the lab was protected by a lock, a lock that Naruto was able to pick and move along from without any trouble. Stealing himself for whatever horrors he would find within he opened the door and rolled inside, closing it behind him to keep a wandering guard from stumbling across him. The lab was empty and cleared out. Anything that he would have found useful or TCH, Naruto let out in an annoyed fashion. A red herring of a base. He should have known, if this place were truly active the people stationed here would have been far more attentive, it would have been a rat's nest comparable to the original Otogaku that Naruto had infiltrated as a boy. Blowing this place to bits now would do nothing more than let Orokimaru know once again that someone was onto him, and that someone was obviously Kanoa since for the most part the rest of the shinobi world simply let him be. They had already destroyed two bases without much of a trace, and the one in Umi no Kuni was next to abandoned by the time they had gotten there. Taking this one out now would have definitely let the snake Sanon know that his gambit of using expendable bases like this was definitely working to keep the heat off of him. This one was a complete and utter bust. As he went to open the door he found it locked from the inside. Naruto jiggled the handle before realizing that he would have to pick it all over again. This place had some stupid security measures. Just as he pulled out his tools for the job a recorded voice came over an intercom in the room. To the fool that thought that trying to inspect the remnants of my research was a good idea. If you really wanted to see what I had been doing here all you had to do was ask Kukukukukuku, the far back wall opened up to reveal three men in prisoner garb. From where they were it appeared that this room was directly connected to the cells of the prison, how fun especially when they looked like they were under the influence of the curse seal. Second stage if the discolored skin and the barely human appearances were anything to go by. Naruto drew his sword from his back wordlessly as they stalked inside of the empty lab, the door to the prison closing itself behind them. These guys were nothing more than mindless savages now. Not worth his time whatsoever, but he couldn't open the damn door without getting rid of them first. Naruto waited for them all to rush him at once in attempt to simply overwhelm him with numbers. From their approach it was clear that they didn't even have any real training, something that he took advantage of when he cleaved the arms of one attacker off at the elbows. Before he could even let out a scream in pain, Naruto cut his head off cleanly. Naruto shoved his shoulder into a second attacker and pushed him back, allowing him to throw a back kick to the third prisoner that caught him in the body, pushing him up against the wall. Naruto quickly backpedaled and reversed his sword in order to run the man against the wall through with it while he was disoriented. The second berserk prisoner ran at the self-cornered Naruto who grabbed the deceased man behind him by the collar and threw him over his shoulder at him. The unexpected action of his blonde prey threw the prisoner off, forcing him to stumble and slow down. More than enough time to let Naruto grab his sword like a javelin and throw it straight at the poor fool, catching him right in the head. Naruto watched the curse seals on their bodies recede with an impassive glance. He pulled the sword from his victim's head and wiped the amassed gore on the blade off on the deceased man's clothing before resheathing it and proceeding to pick the lock, swiftly getting a satisfying click, signifying his success. Damn it, time to pull out. Naruto gave the room one last look before shaking his head. XXX. One week later, Konohagakur no Sato. Soon it read over the report given to her by Naruto, Tenzo, and Yugao, so in the end you didn't get anything else. Naruto shook his head in the negative, he probably builds bases, stays for a bit and leaves, keeping some troops behind as footholds in case he needs to fall back to one. The base in Umi no Kuni was long abandoned. I think the last time he was actually there himself was when he put the seal on Anko and abandoned her. And about that, does Anko still want to kill us for sending her back to the village? A smirk adorned the female cage's face, I'll leave that one a mystery for you to discover when you leave here. She then sighed and placed the written report down, Tenzo, what do you say about Naruto's performance on the mission? Tenzo took off his mask and smiled, we're all alive aren't we Hokage sama Naruto did a great job. The second base in Kawa no Kuni, Land of Rivers was a bona fide death trap, but we worked it out in the end. Naruto didn't look as pleased as Tenzo did over the whole thing, it worked out if you call taking out a bunch of grunts a successful mission. Five months of traveling and searching and we didn't find anything on the guy that I didn't already know. We probably tipped him off about what we were doing too. I've got to find him and kill him before he can switch bodies with the Uchiha, or kill the Uchiha, which would work out too. 
Where's Ero Senen? The next time we do this he needs to come with us so he can fight the snake himself. Suna diverted her eyes, yeah, about that. He came back while you were gone and asked me where you were. He was actually kind of pissed off when I couldn't tell him where you were because I didn't know. He said to summon him to you whenever you got back and heard this from me. Naruto gave her a strange look, how the hell am I going to do that? Sunid shrugged, he said to summon a toad and tell him to come get him. Naruto didn't know what the hell that was going to do, but listened to his order, biting him thumb and making the hand seals, Kuchio's no jutsu, summoning jutsu. In a puff of smoke a toad around Naruto's size appeared, hey bro. How ya doing? It's been a while. Naruto smiled, long time no see Gamakichi. I've been super busy these days, but hey listen, could you get Ero Senen for me, whatever that means. Gamakichi nodded, sure thing Nisan, I'll get him back here in a second. With that the toad vanished in another puff of smoke. The four ninja just stayed where they were in the office silently wondering what to do now. So, Naruto started, what's new around here these days? Before Sunid could answer, Jiraiya appeared in a puff of smoke in the middle of the office with a small elderly looking toad by his feet, now remember to visit me and Mar again soon Jiraiya-chan. And bring that apprentice of yours next time. That got Naruto's attention. Why would any of the toads actually want to meet him? From his experience with Gamabunta he usually hated being summoned unless it was for binge drinking purposes. Jiraiya gave the toad a grin, I'll be sure to do that next time. Why don't you meet him yourself right now? He's just over there, he said, pointing at Naruto. The old toad looked Naruto over, seemingly appraising his worth or whatever. That was certainly what it looked like to him anyway. He finally smirked at Naruto, he looks as if he'll do just fine. Be sure to bring him when you think he's ready. Ready for what? More secrets damn it. And badly kept ones at that. Why did being a ninja have to be so enigmatic only when it was annoying to him? Jiraiya nodded, will do Fukasaku. Tell Shima I said goodbye. The old toad, Fukasaku, nodded before vanishing in smoke. Jiraiya turned to Naruto and gave him a toothy grin, well now Gaki, did you have fun? Kill some Oto ninja did you? Naruto rubbed the back of his head, well yes, not the ones I needed to though. What was that all about by the way? Jiraiya chuckled, even the Sanin have to train too kid. I went to Mount Myoboku since you were off gallivanting across the globe to raid and pillage. He then hooked an arm around Naruto's shoulder and looked at Sunid, can I steal this kid away from your debriefing since you've got these other two with you? Not waiting for an answer he grabbed the boy and jumped out the window with him, thanks a lot Haim. XXX. Jiraiya took Naruto to the top of the Hokage monument and found the boy incredibly amused when they arrived there, they put Bar chans face up here while I was gone. She's so lucky I wasn't here or I would have made a spectacle out of it. He now paid attention to Jiraiya who looked to be in full serious mode, so what do you have for me now Ero Kyofu? Jiraiya looked at Naruto before speaking, you do know that Suna did what you said and repealed the law about the Kyubi don't you? Naruto shrugged, we were moving so fast when we got back in the village and my hood was up so I don't know. And don't tell me how things are going now either. As long as Hamako is okay and nothing happened to her due to her association with me I don't care. If anyone did do anything to her and I find out when I get home, I'm going to go hurt the idiot that did it. Jiraiya kept up his concerned look, are you sure you'll be okay with people if they start cursing you in the street? I'll crack some jaws for you if you want me to kid. Naruto chuckled, thanks Ero Kyofu. But the people love and respect you, for the most part. No, don't throw your representative away for me, as long as no one directly tries to attack me, or my friends, I'll be cool. They can't burn my apartment out after Hamako-chan put up all of the security stuff I told her to do so only direct attacks against us would have a chance of doing anything. If they do, I'll just have to cripple something as punishment. Jiraiya sweet dropped, harsh gaki. Naruto gave him a dry look, Gara would suffocate them in sand and crush them to death. A broken arm or leg is me being nice just so you know. Jiraiya patted Naruto on the shoulder, I don't know how Minato and Kushina would feel about the whole, you crippling the people attacking you thing, well actually Kushina would cheer you on while you did it and probably even jump in herself, but that's neither here nor there. Anyway, I know that your growth as a ninja and your whole attitude over the QB would make them incredibly proud of you. 
Naruto smiled up at the man, thanks a lot Ero Kyofu. I'm not really sure about that though. I'm baptized in blood, how could a hero like the Yondime Hokage consider me anything to be proud of? I'm not even talking about my time in Root anymore, I'm talking about now. Do you know how many lives I just got through ending, either directly or remotely? I'm 14 years old and since the age of 5 I've killed more people than many war veterans even have to, I know I've done more than any other ninja my age, except for Gara. Gara's definitely killed way more people than me, I don't even think I'm close. Jiraiya sighed and flicked Naruto in the forehead, are you dumb kid? Do you know how many ninja your old man killed in his time? I can assure you that your body count has absolutely no chance of holding any kind of candle to his. How many do think you killed? Naruto estimated in his head, I would say between 200 to 300, especially in the one place where we got caught. Jiraiya ruffled his hair, Minato killed over 300 Iwa ninja in one battle, by himself. Before that I think he killed about 100 ninja and raised their camp to the ground when they ended up capturing your mother. Hell I had to pretty much almost destroy an entire village by myself. If you call yourself a killer then what are we? That's what we have to be Naruto, that's the way things are in the shinobi world. In reality in the eyes of the public the only difference between butchers and heroes are the colors of the uniforms of the men you've killed. As messed up as that is, Naruto said, I guess you're right. I had a bit of a punk ass moment there. As long as you're sure they would have been proud of me I believe it to Ero Kyofu. Alright, now I have to go home and see how my, roommate, is doing. Jiraiya then got a lecherous grin on his face, how's that girl doing anyway Gaki? She adjusting to the village okay? Naruto glared at him, get that look off of your face you damn pervert. And how would I know? I've been gone for almost half a year. I guess I'll find out when I go back home. Naruto waved at him, later. Don't be a stranger now. Naruto then used Shunshun to disappear from the mountain. Jiraiya smiled to himself as he watched the leaves settle from Naruto's Shunshun, I wonder how good of a sage that kid would make. XXX. Deciding to see what the people of the village thought of him now rather than wait for a time where he had to actually do something amidst the people and be caught off guard, he decided to stroll through town on the streets on his way home. Much like before, adults didn't try to look at him, but much to his surprise instead of having angry looks on their faces quite a few of them looked down at the ground. That had never happened before. Demon. A passing middle-aged man said as Naruto walked past his position outside of a building. Your mother. Was Naruto's eloquent reply. The man stepped out from his position and marched into the street to confront Naruto, what was that? I don't have to put up with you anymore. You don't have the Hokage's protection anymore, she obviously sees what you really are. Naruto didn't even turn around, yeah, she sees me as someone that is able to handle his own business, so I have one question for you sir. Are you my business? You tell me. He said as he pulled out a pocket knife and ran at Naruto only to be stopped by the blade of Naruto's sword at his throat. Naruto sighed as he looked at the man from a side gaze, that was a great idea. Let's attack the trained ninja armed to his teeth with a stupid pocket knife that's probably too dull to even cut notebook paper. Naruto used the blade of the sword to slide the knife out of the man's hand before smacking him on both of his kneecaps, dropping him to the ground in a bowing position, I had her take away that law for your benefit. Because keeping the secret that wasn't really much of a secret in the first place was getting obnoxious. However, just because you won't get Anbu on you for speaking out about this doesn't mean that someone won't kick your ass for attacking me. I'll do it myself, I'll just enjoy it better. He then used the flat of his sword to knock him out. Naruto looked down at the unconscious man and back up at the villagers who had just watched him knock a grown man out with no effort whatsoever. Naruto laughed nervously as he sheathed his sword, nice day huh? Sorry about that, please, carry on with your business. Naruto then proceeded to whistle a jaunty tune as he continued making his way home. From within a nearby restaurant, a group of young ninja somewhat knowledgeable about the scar-faced blonde had witnessed the spectacle. A group of ten Kanoa ninja were celebrating the fact that the four that were still genin would be traveling to the upcoming Chunin exam in Sooner and had seen just how hostile things could get for Naruto. Each of them sat in silence as they watched him walk off on his own through the window, whistling the entire way. XXX. Yohamako-chan. Naruto yelled as he entered his apartment, I'm back. 
Hamako came from the back room with a gentle smile on her face, welcome home Naruto-sama. I hope you're unharmed from your mission. Naruto nodded as he started taking his gear off, yeah, I'm fine Hamako-chan. I'm just drained, I forgot how long those missions like that really are. Were you okay while I was gone? Yes, I was fine. Tayuya san and the Ichiraku family were very helpful to me while you were gone and I even got to meet the members of your graduating class when they came by asking for you. Hamako admitted to Naruto as he took of his hooded vest that probably had some kind of leftover residue from his violent activities over the last few months. Hamako scrunched up her nose as he walked by her, you smell like blood master. Naruto frowned, sorry. Throughout the mission there was a lot of it and a considerable amount got on me, repeatedly. I need a long shower and a good meal after this. He yawned loudly, what have you been doing to occupy your time? Hamako winked at him, oh just a few personal projects. I have to say master, the seal on your stomach looks very familiar to me. She said as she looked at the visible seal on Naruto's belly, it looks like something derived from the sealing style of Azushiogaku. Naruto made a thoughtful noise, you can study it after I shower, eat, and sleep. Anything interesting happened while I was gone, or did you just watch the wallpaper to entertain yourself? Hokage Sama revealed your Jinchuriki status to the village. Hamako said as she picked up his vest and walked towards his hamper to drop the piece of clothing inside, it was a mildly entertaining spectacle somewhat. Naruto smirked, so how many of the old fogies called for my death when she was through talking? Hamako shrugged, more than a few actually. But then the shinobi that had met and knew of the things you had done in your career thus far shut them up, especially the two that are always guarding the gate. It was amazing. You probably would have gotten a kick out of it. Note to self. Naruto said, send Izumo and Kotetsu a fruit basket or something for being good people. XXX. Three weeks later. Once again, Naruto's training took him deeply into the forest of death. He put his attempts to learn how to utilize the QB's chakra on the back burner for the time being as he wanted to learn the nuances of using his sword. The rate at which it drained his chakra when he transformed the Senenki no Ken into Senenkugik was ridiculous. He couldn't even keep it up for too long without tapping into the QB's chakra and even then, getting more than several minutes of use out of them was seen as a success. How the hell did anyone use this thing without draining themselves dry? Or maybe that was why it was a sealed heirloom in the first place. Hey, maybe he could use it by giving it to his enemies to use themselves. Just let them kick his ass until they drop dead of chakra exhaustion and then take it back. Nobody would ever see that coming. From experimentation the blades cut through pretty much everything like a guillotine blade, even without him circulating wind chakra between them, which was good, because the damn blades absorbed his chakra like a sponge. The transformed blades couldn't cut him, and with them his taijutsu was extensively more dangerous than it ever could have been otherwise. Other than that, he was having more trouble manipulating his new lightning element than he had been expecting. He couldn't even hold the chakra in his hand like he could with his wind chakra without damaging himself. The damage would come by way of him shocking the feeling out of his hands for hours, he couldn't practice getting the feel of the chakra with his cage bunshin because they would dispel after taking the damage, and this was the only way for him to train the element for the time being. His elemental raising gun was a work in progress as well. Adding his wind chakra to the orb ended up blowing up in his face, or more accurately on his arm, giving him deep gashes that took time for him to heal even with his advanced healing. He joked to himself that he needed a medic nin on hand for whenever he wanted to train these days the way all of his current projects were going. Learning his seals with Hamako was a very self-esteem crushing experience to say the least. Every concept he had been working on prior to bringing her back to Kanoa had been burned as she had proceeded to verbally tear down every single original idea he had come up with. Her reasoning being that everything he had made could have been classified as a forbidden technique, and not for the good reasons, like they were strong, or that if they fell into the wrong hands they could endanger Kanoa. No, they were forbidden because everything he had come up with had a greater than not chance of flat out killing him if he had really gone through with their usage. So as far as Hamako was concerned he had to start straight from square one, and she had half a mind to find Jiraiya and make him sit through her lessons as well if he had really been the one to introduce Naruto to those abominations that the boy had the gall to call seals. Even his custom explosive tags that he designed to take the QB's chakra were flawed. 
The timer on them was next to two seconds before detonation, and with the mass of the explosion that really wasn't enough time to get safely away. As far as she was concerned, the only thing she didn't have to reteach him was how to make his own ink and how to write the seals out. The girl was usually very kind and patient normally, however when she was teaching Naruto Fuwinjutsu she was a very harsh taskmaster. Instead of letting him freestyle seals the way that Jiraiya had done from just about day one, letting him get along through trial and error, she had him break down seals that she had put together for him by order of difficulty. Then she would have him do it again under a time limit. She wanted him to be good enough to identify every major nuance of any seal he would come across at naught but a glance, much like she herself was able to. Looking at what Kanoa had referred to as seal masters had actually gotten Hamako to laugh. Not smile, not giggle, but full board laugh uproariously. As far as she could see, Kakashi was a hack and a novice and Jiraiya was overrated. So when Naruto was called into Sunid's office he figured that this was as good of a break as he was going to get from the grind he was putting himself through on a daily basis. What's up Bar-chan? Naruto asked, and before you even complain about it, if anyone in the entire world has a reason or an excuse to call you Bar-chan it's me and you know it. Sunid's eye twitched. The brat had a point, but she still didn't necessarily have to like it, and she was still his boss, relation or not, listen up brat. As you know, the Chunin exam is taking place in sooner this time around and the finals are rolling around in about two weeks. Naruto blinked blankly, no. No I didn't know that. Why the hell would I know that? A paperweight to the head was his response, gah. That was a reasonable question. Sunid put her hand down with a smirk on her face, satisfied with the throw, anyway, I'm taking you and Shizun with me for my security. She pointed towards the black-haired woman standing by the desk, waving pleasantly. Naruto waved back before groaning, ah, another escort mission. Fine, whatever, it's an order. And speaking of sooner, where the hell's my money, I gave you the DNA which means I gave them the DNA, why am I not rolling in dough right now? Yes about that. Sunid said, they don't feel comfortable transporting that much money themselves so they've laid that responsibility on us to collect, which is another reason that I'm assigning you to my personal guard detail. Oh. Naruto looked at her vapidly, well thank you then Bar-chan. But do you think I'm really your guy in case it all goes down while we're there? Shouldn't you bring someone like Kakashi-sensei, or even Ero Senen? Sunid let out a laugh, you don't think you're up for this. You killed a top-level missing ninja that had eluded capture for 20 years and destroyed Otogakure bases. You're a Junin in everything but title kid. So, Naruto said somewhat testingly, promote me. A grin worked its way onto his face. Soon it let a wry grin of her own show, maybe later. I'll think about it. Anyway, tie up all of your loose ends Naruto, you're coming with me and Shizun to sooner. Naruto smirked, if I yelled road trip out the window at the top of my lungs would you hit me? XXX. Kabuto, what does that make, the fourth or the fifth of my bases that have been hit in the last half year? The medic in question adjusted the glasses on his face as he smirked, the last one that was hit last month makes five Orikimaru Sama. And I think you'll find the person that is responsible for the damage to be extremely interesting. Kabuto placed a videotape in the nearby VCR that revealed Naruto fighting the cursed seal prisoners in the empty lab, I guess I do owe him some thanks though. He did free me of the control that Sasori had over me if the buzz over the bounty is anything to be believed. Well now isn't that interesting Kukukuku. Little Naruto-kun is growing up, it looks like your rival hasn't been losing any steps since you left Kanoa has he Sasuke-kun. A pair of spinning Sharingan eyes glowed in the dark, HN. The Dobe is nowhere near my level anymore. His glare grew intense as he saw Naruto easily dispose of his opponents with little effort, I'll be sure to prove that the next time we meet. He'll never get a victory over me again. Orokimaru chuckled in the background, that still remains to be seen Sasuke-kun, perhaps, just maybe Naruto here is more special than you. Sasuke bared his teeth in the darkness as the curse seal ran across his face, there's nothing special about that loser. And soon I'll finish what we started myself. First him, then Itachi. That will be it for this video if you want more comment down below, like, subscribe. And see you guys later.